My son and I built our own home out of the earth beneath our feet. We stopped it on tarps with sand and straw and water to make an earthen building material known as cob. It's an inexpensive way, I mean literally it's dirt cheap way, of building your own house. It's also a great example of DIY, do it yourself, or even better said, in this case, DIT, do it together, because we didn't do it alone. We had the help of family and friends throughout the process. They came and they got their hands and their feet dirty right alongside us to help us meet one of our fundamental human needs. And when people build like this, we not only create a shelter at a far lower cost by providing our own labor, we also form deeper relationships with those that come and help in the process. So here's my own sprawling 600 square foot mansion. Um, it's cost me about seven grand this far, it's still a work in progress, but that's just about one-tenth the cost of a typical house these days. I've kept the cost low by working with natural and salvage materials, and when you're working on the cheap, creativity, resourcefulness, time, and community are your greatest assets. Weirdos attract other weirdos, and so I've had the pleasure because of an uncommon combination of hands-on skills and professional training of working with a lot of really great people and projects. I've helped other owner builders work on hermitages and sound booths, welcome centers and outbuildings and farm buildings and bars. And together we've explored earth and straw and bamboo and uh, salvage materials like bricks and glass bottles and even conventional materials like structural insulated panels. And for me, one of the parts I love most about being a weirdo and building unusual buildings is crossing paths with other unusual projects and using my skills to help them manifest their dreams into reality. So last year, I was introduced to Open Source Ecology. It's a, a nonprofit that takes DIT, do it together, to a whole nother level with a project called the Global Village Construction Set. It's DIT versions of the 50 industrial machines needed to attain a modern standard of living. Machines like tractors and windmills, bread ovens, solar concentrators, brick presses, the list goes on and on. And the designs for these machines are all open source, which means they're available online for free under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike license, which means that anyone can replicate these designs even in an enterprise model to make money. And the GVCS is not actually just a set of machines, it's a machine building kit of parts. It's like a life-size Lego or a Rector set, except it's a lot heavier. Um, and that means that we can build the modules in parallel with each other and then rapidly assemble these machines. And it also means, because of the modularity, that there's interchangeability where the wheel unit, the rotor that makes the wheel unit, can in minutes turn into a soil mixing machine or a trenching machine. It's, it's super cool. Um, and when I cross paths with Marcin Jakubowski, the founder and executive director of Open Source Ecology, he was looking for a collaborator to help him reimagine the home building process so that a crowd of unskilled builders could come together and build a house super fast using these open source machines and parallel processing. So we applied the same design thinking to the micro house that's applied to the OSE machines. We broke it down into numerous different modules that can be processed at the same time by small groups of people and then brought together rapidly for assembly. You know, home building is typically an entirely linear process foundation, framing, siding, roof, and the subcontractors come through and install all the systems, drywall goes on, they come in, they paint it, then the trim goes up in the cabinets, and then finally you get the keys and you get to move in. Our proof of concept shows that even in owner-built shelter, that can be largely parallelized and done incredibly rapidly. For instance, we take all the electrical and plumbing and we put it in a single partition wall. Um, once the exterior walls of the building are all stacked up, we bring that wall in, we pop it into place, make a few connections, add the other modules around it, and the house is ready to go. And even though one of our primary design intents is speed, we didn't want to sacrifice sustainability. So the micro house incorporates passive systems for heating and cooling to reduce energy costs, in addition to being made of the low embodied energy compressed earth blocks. And this is what it looks like in practice. We have one group of people stacking compressed earth blocks on the foundation, while we have other groups of people building the modules in the shop nearby and then we bring it together and rapidly assemble the shell of the building. It's like a barn raising for the 21st century, using open source hardware to reduce the amount of backbreaking labor done by the people. And this is the result of the Microhouse One build. Open source, DIT, modular construction, designed for sustainability 
and created by a community of collaborators and then shared freely with the world for other people to adapt and modify to their own needs. And this is how we're adding on to Marchin and his wife Katerina's house right now. The modular design exists at the macro scale as well, so that it can grow over time with the owner's needs and means. And we provide an enormous amount of detail so other people can adapt and modify it and grow it as they would want to as well. The next forks in the road of this open source project are to move it in two directions. In one direction, we're going to move towards an even faster, simpler, lower cost build with the ultimate goal of being able to create an entire house in a single day. In the other direction, the one that compels me the most is to create an open source DIT home that meets the requirements of the most rigorous and visionary certification for buildings on the planet for sustainability, and it's called the Living Building Challenge. And who knows what other directions collaborators from around the world are going to take this project and modify it to meet their own needs. So to make this possible, we provide tools for builders like step-by-step -step guides on Dazuki, the walk people that want to replicate through the steps of the design, both for the micro house and for numerous of the other machines. And then for those that want to go even further, for developers, we provide, it's very exciting, a big spreadsheet that's filled with links to every asset that we create during the research, design, and construction phase of the project. Because we want people to be able to explore the world of open source hardware as deeply as they want to go. Communities are built on individuals working together. Because when we come together and build things with our hands, we have the opportunity to share our skills and to grow them and to have a hell of a good time in the process. Um, you know, building one's own home is not going to be for everyone, and the micro house is certainly not for every situation because architectural responses for every site are unique. What we're providing is another option for people that are not interested in going deeply into debt to meet their own basic needs. It's an option that creates a different relationship between a homeowner and the home that they will inhabit, a different relationship between the homeowner and the technology that they use to make their house, and a different relationship between the homeowner and the community that surrounds them and supports them. Because when we come together and we build things with our hands and we build ourselves, we're really building more than just tractors and brick presses and houses. We're building a stronger, more resilient society. Thank you.